Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video and yeah, this has gone completely wrong, hasn't it? Um, completely not as we predicted or as we thought. Chelsea lose 2-0 at Stamford Bridge against the Premier League champions, Liverpool and uh, everything went wrong, everything went wrong. How am I going to start this one today, honestly, because... There were there were there were a few key factors that I do I normally don't bring up and I feel that were key as to why we didn't win the game today or at least why we didn't manage to take advantage up until the red card and then when the red card happened everything went to complete disarray. Um, I want to start off by saying the lineup, the lineup. You saw what I told you we should do in my lineup predictor that I uploaded yesterday. I told you what I thought um, would have been the perfect team to go with and the perfect formation and the perfect system. we done none of that. So I think it's safe to say you're going to already understand why I'm against the way that Lampard set the team up in the first place. I did say that I think it would have been crucial to have a Havertz in the number 10 role, in behind the striker. Yeah, I understand why Mason Mount started the game and I said that in my predictor as well. Someone with the absence of Ziyech playing Havertz in behind the striker, we don't have Pulisic on the pitch, it would be beneficial to have Haver um to have Mason Mount, sorry, um on the side just pressing and trying to cause some pressure. Now, the fundamental difference to that is we weren't trying to pile pressure onto Liverpool. We were sitting back, we were being very defensive, we were being ne very negative. We were trying to catch out Liverpool on a counter, which is <sighs> risky business, risky business. Uh, it's very hard to take the quality of Liverpool, right, up against you. And you're sitting back, knowing that your team defensively isn't at its best. We, are, we have loads of players missing. Defensively, we knew we weren't as strong as we hope we're going to be in the next few games, right? It's a very risky uh, a very risky move to try and sit back and play defensive and just try and contain all the pressure that Liverpool put upon you. Very dodgy, because Liverpool will get through. And you saw some of the combinations they were making and some of the ways they were penetrating through the gaps. They will get through you. And they've done just that, but... At least before the red card, we did have a few moments. We had some moments where we did manage to catch them on a little counter. We did try and utilise Timo Werner. We did try to utilise a bit of pace. But even when we were trying to catch them on a counter, and even on the occasions that we did manage to get past Liverpool's midfield line and try to get the ball to Timo or any of the front men, what happened? The moment one of the front men got it, there was no one to help. No one to help. It was like we had the team split into two completely. Comple we had the defence just sitting back. Full back trying to bomb forward. But the defence and a big portion of the midfield. Jorginho and Kovacic just sitting back. And we had Timo take the ball by himself. Or Mason Mount take the ball by himself. Or Kai Havertz take the ball by himself. Or when Kante got the ball and somehow he was the one that was uh, trying to dribble through, he'd take the ball and there'd be no one to combine with. Why? Because every time that we tried to hit him on a counter, every time we did try to get a ball to a front man, and one of them got the ball, they were surrounded by about five. Boom. Action cut off. Nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. And a big reason as to why that was continuously happening always happening was because there wasn't anyone in midfield that was creating or being the bond in between that midfield line and the front men there was no one as a number 10 at number 10 that i said Havertz needed to be put in yeah he wasn't there he was being he was being played on the right hand side or the left hand side sorry him and Werner kept alternating so sometimes Havertz would end up as a false nine sometimes Werner would be the main striker uh, Havertz would be on the left or when Werner's on the left yeah Havertz would be a false nine but there was no one sitting in behind trying to be the creative link trying to find the killer pass trying to be the glue in between Jorginho Kovacic, Kante and Timo Werner, nothing. It was a massive hole, very easy for someone like Henderson or Vinaldum or whoever to come in and just sweep and take the threat away, very easy. Because anytime one of our frontmen got the ball, they were shut down very quickly. And then what happened? The red card. The red card. 
You know, we started off um, the lineup with uh, a four-three-three. So we started off with a Reese James Kepering goal. Reese James going to come to Kepa later. Reese James, Marcos Alonso, Zuma, and Christensen. We had Jorginho, Kovacic, and Kante, and the front three of Mason Mount on the right-hand side. Have a on the left and Werner up front whilst they were continuously switching. Um, but once the Christensen red card came, that was uh, a <laughs> that was a wrap. <laughs> Basically, that was a wrap. That was it. Um, very silly. Very silly. And for two reasons. For two reasons. Why we were caught out in that move in the first place is beyond me. Why? Why someone like Mane is being given that space to run into and being allowed to get through in between the two centre-backs that were so far away from each other. Zuma looked like he was in position. Christensen was right. was wide. Very wide. Massive hole, Mane runs in between, boom, he's clear. And what happens? You have a choice to make at that point. At, at that point, you have a choice to make. As a centre-back, you either bring the man down and get sent off, or you allow him to go and take his chance. It's one of them. It's one of them. Or if you're an outstanding defender, you somehow manage to get a tackle in and you win the ball. Then in that case, that's the perfect occasion. That's the perfect challenge. But that was never going to happen. When you're putting Christensen against Mane, Mane, who was the front man, Christensen's behind him, that's not going to happen. So what did Christensen do? He rugby tackled him. It is a red card. Anyone that's complaining of a red card, it is a red card. It's a straight red. So for that decision, referee got it spot on. Now, some people are saying, oh, you know, it's because he doesn't trust Kepa. He doesn't trust Kepa. Last time I checked, Kepa did run out. It's not like Kepa allowed Mane to just come one-on-one -on -one facing him because if he'd done that, Mane would have put the ball in the net. Kepa, for me, done the right thing in that occasion. He ran out. He tried to make himself look big. He ran out of the box. He tried to go for the ball whilst he knew Christensen was in danger and Christensen was the one to blame in that occasion. You could say why the ball was, wasn't closed down in the first place, but then again, cross-field balls can happen. But to be caught out like that and to be, you know, not organised between yourself and Kurt Zuma and leaving that much space for someone like Mane, you can't be doing that. So Christensen was at fault for that one. We move into <laughs> the goal. We were already down to 10 men at this point and the goal had me laughing. Why? Because it wasn't... An occasion where we were outnumbered. It wasn't an occasion where we couldn't deal with the threat. If you rewatch that goal again, it was three Liverpool players passing in between themselves. Well, two Liverpool players passing in between themselves and then crossing the ball into the box for Mane to finish off. So you could say three Liverpool players were involved in the action against seven Chelsea players in the box. You cannot do that. I don't care if you've got one, two, three men sent off. There are seven of you in that box to deal with the threat. You're allowing two Liverpool players to pass it in between you and allow a third to come in in between all of you and stick it in the net with a clean header. You can't be doing that. You just can't be doing that. You can't be doing that. And um, there, there was there was a lot a lot of um, tactical mishaps today. Tactical mishaps. And I'm going to come to that one in a sec. Before I, make, before I do, though, I want to talk about Kepa. Because the second goal... A lot of people are going to look at Kepa. A lot of you would expect me to look at Kepa and go, oh my God, yeah, yeah, you know, you have to blast Kepa on this one. I'm going to blame Kepa. I'm not going to just blame him though. Because we have this tendency, and I don't know why we continuously do this. We always go back. We always go back. Always pass the ball back. Always pass the ball back always pass the ball back i feel like i'm turning into an answering machine why do we have this tendency instead to try and go forward we go back and what does that do it allows liverpool to press and what happens when liverpool presses liverpool the champions liverpool with the players they have liverpool they press what happens you're under pressure now if we had a world-class goalkeeper and a world-class defence, I'd be like, yeah, you know what? We might be able to deal with this. It's not a problem. We go back, we've got the personnel to deal with it. We don't have the personnel to deal with it. We don't even have our first-choice players on the pitch. Thiago Silva and Chilwell ain't even there. You know? How are we going to deal with that? You're dealing with a goalkeeper who is already under pressure, a goalkeeper who's already lost confidence. Mendy isn't even here yet. We know that's going to happen very shortly, and that was announced during the game. Kepa is already under that pressure. 
Tomori receives the ball. He has the option to boot the ball up the pitch. He has the option because he has his back towards uh, the goal that he wants to score. He's facing Kepa. So he has another option. Put the ball out for a throw. Don't put your goalkeeper under pressure. Put the ball out for a throw. Whack it out for a corner. Do whatever you got to do. He th- he went for what he thought was the safe option. He thought, let me pass it to Kepa. Even though there was Liverpool men closing in very quickly. And he knew that because he was under pressure on his left shoulder. He passes it to Kepa. Kepa thinks, oh my god. What do I do? So he makes a mistake too. And he passes it straight to Mane. Now he should have seen Mane. Mane was right in front of him. Running towards him and he decided to pass. He panicked. That's one thing that we know Kepa is going to do. He's going to panic. And he panicked. And he blew it. But I don't want to just put the blame on Kepa. Because as far as I'm concerned. During that action. If you go back and watch it. That action shouldn't have ended up with Kepa having the ball. It just shouldn't have. We always have this thing where we're, we're, we're constructing the play. We're passing. We have an option to move forward. It happened a few times. We have an option to move forward. We don't take it. We go back. You're putting yourselves under pressure here. You're putting yourselves under pressure. Go. Especially if you're losing 1-0. Go. Penetrate. You have an option to pass to. Pass it. You have Havertz or Werner or Mount or if there's Kante there or if Reese James is on, a, on, on an overlap or on the other side if Alonso is on an overlap, whatever you're doing, you have an option to go forward, use it. If, you, if, you're, if you're completely shut off and everyone is marked, go back. But uh, everyone is marked. So the focus is taken away. So your goalkeeper won't be under pressure because everyone is marked. They're not pressing, they're marking. This is the point. We, we always go back. When we're being pressed. It's, it's ludicrous. And that falls with Lampard. I'm sorry that falls with Lampard. That falls with Frank Lampard. His in-game management today. And as far as I'm, con- I'm, as far as I'm concerned. His team selection in the first place was wrong. Was wrong. He's a young manager. He's learning. I'm hoping with the signings that are coming in. And the signings that have already come in. He is going. It's going to help him revitalise the team. It's going to uh, help him get experience. And help him learn more about his players. And how to use them. One example you look. Because a lot of people are going to say. Hey you can't be blaming Lampard. He hasn't got all of his players yet. We'll wait until all the players are on. Cool. Liverpool didn't even have Thiago up until yesterday. Thiago signed yesterday. He showed up today. Came on at half time. Man of the match. Thiago made more passes in that second half alone than any other Chelsea player on the pitch today. 75 passes. Hey, he just showed up yesterday. He doesn't know Adam from Eve. You know, he doesn't know any of his players. He hasn't got any chemistry going. But guess what? Klopp managed to find a system where they utilise Thiago as the builder. And that is something that we didn't have. And we should have had, in my opinion, Havertz as the builder. But we didn't do that. We had complete open space in the midfield and we tried to use Kante as the guy to run in between as far as I'm concerned the man management today was off it was off and I have to blame Lampard for that one but it doesn't mean Lampard out or anything ridiculous like that no he's young he's learning but we need to hurry up now there's pressure on there's pressure on you know it's just, this isn't last season where we had the excuses transfer ban no signings Hazard's gone blah 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 no 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 we've got everything at our disposal now Lampard needs to prove himself Pressure is on now. I understand we played against Liverpool. I understand we were down to 10 men. But even with 10 men, there were occasions in that game where we were just sitting back and ball watching. You're two little down lads. You might as well just go for it. I don't care if we lose 2-0 or 4-0 at this point. But you go for it. We didn't. So I'm hoping um, it's a lesson learned. It's very early on in the season. 36 games to go. We need to, you know, just try and forget about this one. Not forget about it. Learn from it. And try and rectify the wrongs. And hopefully the players that Weren't on the pitch today, Pulisic, Ziesh, Silva, Chilwell, Mendy's coming. Um, you know, hopefully all of them will get to step in and help revitalise the team. Fingers crossed. In terms of Edouard Mendy, it was announced during the game from Fabrizio Romano that it's a done deal. Medical will be done very shortly. Announcement is coming next week. So when that is uh, hotting up, I will do a video on that. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your opinions on today's game. Um, it's very unfortunate. Everything went wrong. What can I say? <laughs> but let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear it. Subscribe if you are new. Hit the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Um, smash the like button. Let's try and get this to 7,000 likes. Thank you all so much for your support. It's been brilliant. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will see all of you really soon. Thank you for watching. Have a good one. Look after yourselves. Take care. And peace.